are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Hi, my name is Nikilia, and I would like to invite you to plug in and get connected to Yes, Youth Empowerment Session. Someone is lost, stuck in the dirt, buried alive. Buried alive. Maybe someone who wrapped the dreams, living a lie. Hallelujah. This is for them, they were good, daddy, and they never died. Come on. Remember the pain, all the sorrow, all the fights. Yes, sir. Too many times, too many trials, too many days, too many nights. Searching who's working, working the hardest. On the last time, feeling impartial. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop Nothing you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing against you. It will not prosper. It won't prosper. You can find healing. You can find healing. Healing. Good morning, church. I want to thank you for inviting us into your homes today. I'll be very happy when our church family can meet together and see one another. Again, I want to thank everyone for all they have said and done to, for us while we were gone. And I want to encourage everyone to get the flu shot. Let me see that again. In this pandemic, I want to encourage everyone to get the flu shot. And I also pray to everyone who understand this virus is very serious. Wash your hands social distance, and be safe. Please continue to pray for one another, those who are sick, those who may be in the hospitals. I pray that you will pray for them. Pray for one another. Your prayers are very important. Thank you for sending in your tithe and offering. Thank you for sending in your tithe and offering your financial support is very important to our church. I want you to know our church is still being cared for by our trustees on the inside and on the outside. And before you come back, we'll have the entire church sanitized. And there'll be new rules and regulations when we return. Social distance will be a major concern for us. To whom much is given, much is required. 
I thank God for all that has happened in our church and with our members. And at this point in my message to you today, I will say nothing about Brother Butler. I want to thank Sister Cynthia Bailey for remembering us as she always does. And I want her to know that we are remembering you in our prayers and we remember your husband as well. We will never forget him. Last but not least, please continue to attend all of our Bible studies, our church school and other meetings virtually. Continue to tune in and take part. You get a chance to talk to our members that way and they get a chance to talk and see you. So I thank all the leaders that are for this to happen. Certainly want to thank God for each one of you. Thank God for our trustees who continue to take good care of our church in our absence, as well as those who continue to come and protect our church when they are here. Good morning, church family. Our scripture this morning will come from John chapter 15, verses 7 through 11. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father's glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye, commi- if ye could keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we come to you right now, asking you to just to come in and sit with us for a little while. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's been eight months since we've been in the church, oh, Heavenly Father, the building that is, oh, Heavenly Father. But we've been having church wherever, at home, on the just outside, wherever we could, O oh Heavenly Father, we've had church. Because this is just the building, O oh Heavenly Father. We miss the people, seeing the people sitting in the pews, O oh Heavenly Father. But that's okay, O oh Heavenly Father, because you're everywhere, O oh Heavenly Father. O oh Heavenly Father, we just ask that you continue to bless us, O oh Heavenly Father. Because I see this as a blessing, O oh Heavenly Father. It's a time to where we can work on us, O oh Heavenly Father. So that when all of this is said and done, O oh Heavenly Father, we know who will get all the praise and honor. And that will be you, O oh Heavenly Father. It's just like if we see a picture of an apple, oh Heavenly Father. Some people may say it's just an apple, oh Heavenly Father. But if you give it to the elders, O oh Heavenly Father, they'll say that's an apple pie. That's some applesauce. Because that's a blessing, O oh Heavenly Father. We got to open our minds, O oh Heavenly Father. Just don't see just one thing. With you, all things are possible, Heavenly Father. And that's what I say, O Heavenly Father. Just just cover us, O Heavenly Father. Give us whatever we need, which you already have done. We ask that you continue to be with our pastor and first lady, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, he sure enough needs you now, because he's a people person, O Heavenly Father. And he missed his flock, O Heavenly Father. But we know when it is all said and done, he'll be right here, O Heavenly Father, just smiling, just giving you all the praise and honor. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to be with us and be with this world right now, Heavenly Father, as we continue to go through this pandemic. We ask these in your precious name. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. Today, I certainly want to thank 
Deacon Jasper Harris for having read for us from the book of John, St. John, the 15th chapter. He read from the 7th to the 11th verse. I'd like to use for a subject today these words. God does answer prayer. God does answer prayer. Question. Does God answer all prayers? Does God answer every one of your prayers? Is God on duty 24-7? Does God ever take leave time? Does God ever go on vacation? Is there ever a time when God is not listening? Sometimes we wonder if God has heard our prayers. I know we do. Sometimes things happen to us and we wonder whether God is still answering prayers. Sometimes we wonder when, where, uh, where is God? When is God going to answer our prayers? Sometimes we get so carried away with asking that we never take time to listen. God is a loving God. God is always answering our prayers. But sometimes we are in a hurry. We want the answer right now. I have come to give the biblical answer. That's why I'm here this morning. To give you the biblical answer. About God answering prayer. We are in a hurry. We are always in a hurry. We want God to answer now. First of all, I want you to know that God's time is not the same as our time. God's time is not the same as our time. I heard a preacher say one time, he is always on time. And that he is an on-time God. I heard this preacher say that because the question was asking, when will God answer my prayer? He may not answer when you call him. But he's always on time. There's a song that I thought Deacon Harris was going to sing today. He is an on-time God. Yes, he is. The Bible is filled with answered prayers. The Bible is filled with answered prayers. From Genesis to Revelation. We have always heard the answer to God's prayers, to our prayers. We are always asking God for something. But our God is a loving God, and he has promised to answer all of our prayers. In today's lesson, I'm in the text. In today's lesson, John the 15th chapter, there are two requirements for answers to our prayer. I want to say that again. There are two requirements 
for answering our prayers. Number one, we are to abide in him. We are to abide in him. That means to continue in him. Last, last, last Sunday, my sermon was just that one word, continue. We are to continue in him. Continue worshiping, continue serving, continue praying. That's number one. You are to abide in him. It means to remain in his, in his purpose. Remember, it means to remain where you are at all costs. Remain where you are. Don't move. Number two, his words are to abide in you. And they are to become an important part of your life. His words are to abide in you and to become an important part of your life. You are to be filled with and guided by his word. If you meet these two requirements, your prayers will be answered. Just those two, your prayers will be answered. Sometimes the answer is immediate. Peter. Walked on water to go to Jesus. As he began to sink, uh, he prayed, Lord, save me. And the answer was immediate. Sometimes the answer is delayed. The delay is, is just what it says. It's delayed. It's coming, but it's it's delayed according to his will. Remember the resurrection of Brother Lazarus? That was a delayed prayer. Lazarus, if you remember, was sick. Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha loved their brother sent for his friend Jesus to come and heal him. If you remember, Jesus delayed in coming. How dare you? You my friend, you my buddy. You've eaten in my home. And when I need you, you don't come. He he came. But it was Jesus delayed in coming until Lazarus was was dead. And in the tomb, dead in the tomb for four days. Then he came and raised Lazarus. The resurrection was delayed, but not denied. I want to say that again. I think I just said something. The resurrection was delayed, but not denied. The answer to your prayer may be delayed, but not denied. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. Don't get in a hurry. Why hurry? God knows what the answer is going to be. The answer is sometimes no. When God answers no, he always accompanies the answer with peace and grace. I know I'm right about it. The answer is sometimes different from what you expect. Sometimes we ask for something and God does the answer, but doesn't answer the way we want him to answer. But we have to understand something about God. God is always right, perfect in every way. 
And also, we must remember, God knows the outcome of every answer. He knows about it before you answer. Before you ask, God knows the answer. And when the answer is no, God always accompanies the answer with peace and grace. Praise the Lord. The answer is sometimes different from what we expect. I know I'm right about that. Sometimes it's different. Uh, we expect God to answer our prayer in a certain way, in a certain time, and sometimes in a certain place. You pray, you pray, I pray for the answer, but sometimes it's different from what we expect. You pray for that person, and uh, you pray for God to bless. You also pray for perseverance. I know I do, but sometimes God sends tribulation. Because tribulation brings about perseverance. God always, always, I want to underline that. God always answers prayer. Not according to your will and your way. Not according to your wills, your wishes. Not to give you everything that you want. But God answers all prayers. He answers our prayers according to his will. And his way. Believe me, my sisters and my brothers, God knows best. More than anything else, remember that God loves you. No one ever loves you as much as God loves you. He told you that in John 3.16. There are times when God is ready to answer your prayers and my prayers. But guess what? We too busy. Never too busy. We should never be too busy, never too busy to ask God for something. And we, if we're not too busy to, to ask, then we should not be too busy to listen. When was the last time you talked to God? When was the last time you waited for your answer? My sisters and my brothers, God is the loving God. God's the merciful God. God is patient. And God's a prayer answering God. There's nothing too hard for God. Whatever you can think about, God has already thought about it. God, God does answer prayer, all of our prayers. God does answer all of our prayers. He does answer all of our prayers. When was the last time you pray to God. I mean, pray without ceasing. When was the last time you prayed to God without interruption? When was the last time you prayed to God and looking at TV at the same time? When was the last time you found time to go to God in prayer? Sometimes you need to go in the closet. Find a closet somewhere, close the, close the door, and spend a little time praying to God and listening to God. If you can find time to pray, God will find time to answer. My statement to you today is stay connected. If you stay connected to God, God will stay connected to you. Remember, my sisters and my brothers, God was always in the prayer answering mode. God will always answer because he is always listening. And he is always able to answer our prayers. Remember, God hears your prayer. And we need to take time to listen 
for God's answer. Yeah, no things are possible when we believe an old chain to break a bow when we receive the away. Now, this same God that I'm talking about. You have never, you've never, ever given your life to Christ. This same God is still waiting for you. If you never, ever told God you loved him, he's waiting right now. I know, I know, I know we can't get into the churches now because of this pandemic. But when the pandemic is overrun somebody's church run down the aisle and say I heard a preacher say I should give my life to Christ here I is that's the incorrect language here I am give my life to Christ always remember that let us pray what a friend we have in Jesus What a dear friend, an everlasting friend we have in Jesus. We come at this hour to thank you, dear God, for all of your divine blessings. We thank you for all the many times you answer our prayers, undeserving prayers, but you gave an answer nonetheless. We thank you, dear God, for your peace and your love and your understanding heart. We thank you, dear God, for blessing us through this pandemic. We know when we go, come out of it on the other side that you'll still be in the blessing business. In fact, you're blessing us right now. We thank you, dear God. Continue to bless our church family, wherever they may be, wherever they may go. Put your loving arms around them. Let them feel the closeness of your let our church be the church you're coming back to look looking for let us be steadfast unmovable always in the posture of prayer we thank you for what you've done we thank you for what you're doing right now we show sure enough thank you for what you're going to do continue to bless us dear God and let us be a blessing to you I ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. In his name I do pray. You keep your promises. And now may the grace, the love, the peace, and the joy of our Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus. The sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide with each of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. And those who love the Lord said, Amen.